title. Their title is Sam's Red Wiggler Sojourn. <laughs> These, these titles are so what? awkward slash suggestive. Right, they really are. <laughs> so the question is, Sam wants to get some red wiggler worms for his compost pile from Nathan and Becca. Aw. To get there, Sam has to walk 10 miles north, 3 miles west, 5 miles south, and 12 okay. miles east. What is the magnitude of displacement from Sam's starting point? Yeah, so this is a vector question. Mm -hmm. This is a physics vector question, Bicular, right? Um, so, do you know what makes vectors significant, right, or different than direction? It's direction, direction and velocity. Yeah. Dire oh, it's direction and magnitude is what we tend to right. say, right? So whatever. So there are different. There are different vector quantities, right? But whatever the vector quantity is, it's, it's a direction plus the magnitude of change. Right. So in this case, right, we're talking about just displacement. So how far? And the, the non-vector uh, dis like equivalent of displacement is distance, right? Right. So like I would normally say I travel five miles to get to Nate and Becca's Red Wiggler Bonanza, where I'm picking up these worms. <laughs> um, but, but in this case, we want to pay attention to direction also. So right. since we're also paying attention to direction, we're calling it displacement. It's magnitude, that would be the 10 miles, mm -hmm. plus direction. And when that, we're talking about displacement, we're not necessarily talking about how far that you traveled. We're talking about how far you are from your original point. How far I am from my original point, right. that's exactly right. That's a very good point, right? Yeah. I, may, I may need to travel, and in fact, I think we'll see that I travel significantly farther than my actual distance as the crow flies. Which we do all the time, right? Every time we drive, we do that. Absolutely. Where we walk down the street. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you can't walk through buildings. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> anyway. All right, did we get the, did we get the, the graphic? Mm, the graphic? Oh, oh the fancy graphic that. that you're producing. I drew. You drew arrows? No, I didn't yeah. draw. You didn't draw arrows? I didn't draw anything yet. I just drew oh, Sam. Sam. Yeah, and there's yeah, Sam's starting point. Well, that looks just like so, Sam. So this is my starting point. Okay, and then what do I do? Do you want me to read it to you? Yeah, you, you read it, and okay. you tell me what to draw. Is that his beard? That's his beard underneath there. Okay. It's a little my beardy. beard. Wait, yeah, that's it's his Sam, beard. That's beard. Sam after the summer. His beard's a little longer. Yeah. This is summer Sam. I can't <laughs> wait for Summer Sam. He's almost here. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Just you guys wait. All right, Um. so it says Sam wants to get some of the... To get to the, the compost pile, Sam has to walk 10 miles north. I assume that's 10 miles, or maybe it's 10 meters. I don't know if it's weirder for you, to, you guys to be a significant number of miles away from me, or just a I number of meters. I think significant, right? <laughs> right? You're like, like for a long 40 walk. meters away from yeah. me. <laughs> just anyway, toss some red so wigglers I walk 10 out. miles north, let's say, or maybe meters north, one of the two. All for some red wigglers. All for some red wigglers. Yeah. And then I'm going to walk three miles west. Oh, oh, yeah, other way. West. I think from this problem we learned that Sam needs to get a car or a scooter or something. I like walking, although if yeah. I'm picking up red wigglers, yeah, what am I carrying them in, in my beard? Yeah. I would, need, <laughs> I would need the car. Okay, then I walked five miles south. And then I walked 12 miles east. So wait, five. And then 12 miles east. Mm -hmm. So, like. What in the heck am I doing? It's Why a one did way, you go this direction, it's Sam? It's a one-way sidewalk, Sam. Yeah, what? <laughs> it's all the time in our car. You can't walk the other direction. This is the only way. It's like I'm yeah. spiraling. I'm spiraling upward as I'm doing this or something. <laughs> it's the only way it would make sense. Okay, so, geez. Um, well, I didn't take the most efficient route, but you'll notice now that um, my that origin you. point, uh, to my, from my origin point to my yeah, end point, thanks, Becca. Fantastic, because we're going to need that space. Yeah. So, my, from my origin point to my end point is a much shorter distance than that. Yeah, what are you doing? I don't know. He said he likes walking. Yeah, well, this is silly. <laughs> Thinking about red wigglers. <laughs> hey, it's summer now. Sam can waste time. I can just waste time. I have nothing to do. So we're trying to, to find this. Yeah, so really that's what we want, right? We want the distance from my origin point to, to my end point. Um, and, and what we can do there is, right, so we, we've got this, you know, essentially a hypotenuse now of a right mm. triangle. Right? Oh, well. And so what we need to do is determine what are the legs of the right triangle, right? And so, you know, since I originally walked 10 miles north and then I came back ten mi five miles south, excuse me, that means that the short leg of the right triangle should be five miles. The short leg should be five. And then since I walked three... Okay, so oh, sorry, that ahead. makes sense. So because 
this and this, these two are the same. Right. Those two and are the then, same. So that must mean that this is five. That's right. Good. Uh huh. And then since I walked three miles west and then <laughs> turned right around and walked 12 miles east, that's, the uh, that's a difference of nine miles, right? So I, I walk, so, so the other leg, the longer leg of the right triangle. Yep. A nine mile. Well, it looks like I could have just walked five miles north. And nine miles east. Yeah, just 14 miles. Or you just could have gone directly there. Well, I mean, at least in that case, we, at least in that case, we could assume there's a building or a lake or a mm -hmm. no sé qué, like in that in the way there. But there's no reason for me to do the other, unless I thought that, unless I originally thought that Nate was at the the junction of the three meter in the front, like I the, think the you far were corner. Maybe picking some of it up at that really cheap restaurant. Yeah, couldn't the I? Yeah, maybe that's right. Yeah, the restaurant must be like right up the here. The hole in the wall is up there. Yeah, you got it. You got to put the hole in the wall on the, on the top left corner, and then the Dead oh, wait, Sea was just here. three miles away from right. Right. <laughs> right, and then and then it would have yeah, three miles the in the wrong in the direction. <laughs> hole in the wall. Okay, perfect. But anyways, I'll turn it over to the mathy folks to tell us how we can figure out the length of the hypotenuse. In other words, the displacement, yeah. the magnitude of the displacement, and then we can also afterwards. Since this is a displacement, we can't just say the magnitude. We're also going to have direction. to determine the direction. What yeah. is it? Okay, you do the math, like and I'm just going to dictate. I like Pythagorean to theorem, this. which comes up a lot more than anybody thinks. Um, so we're going to say that the hypotenuse. Where there are two ways to identify the hypotenuse. One is it's always the longest side of a right triangle, um, but often you don't know it. So, or often when you're using it, you can't determine which is the longest. Um, but it's always across from the right angle, which makes it the longest side. Um, so with Pythagorean theorem, we always use, and I, I kind of say this two ways. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, I kind of find students get a little thrown off because they always, like sometimes if you put a y in there, like they're like, where is the c? So I like to think of it also as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. How did and, I know that? Yeah, and that kind of emphasizes like the A and the B, it doesn't really matter which one you call A, which one you call B. The that's, important thing is the hypotenuse. That's really intelligent isolated. because I think that that is so often the problem, right, is that we, we get locked in. What's our A? Students will get locked what's in. Right. I thought yeah. A was this one. I thought yeah. A was always the short one. And sometimes C is the leg and not the hypotenuse. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. They're just letters that are supposed to stand yeah. in mm -hmm. for something. So we got our two legs. So we got one leg is nine. So nine, yeah, nine squared, squared plus five squared, which is the other leg. And the hypotenuse, I like to use D here just because we're talking about distance, but if we use C to start, then just stick with what you used. I'm but gonna use just, C. Yeah, we're gonna use C. I just like to use variables that represent, you know, what we're actually looking for. That well, we're sound. looking for the vector this time. Yeah. So. Um, so in solving this, we just simplify like we always do on our left side, 81 plus 25 equals c squared, and we just keep on simplifying that. So we get 106. And then right here, we have to do the inverse of squaring c, which is to do the square root of c. Square rootin'. We do the same thing to both sides. All um, right, what is our square root of 106? off the top of my head, we'd say it's 10 point something, right? Because 100, yep. square root of 100 is 10, so a little bit more than that. The square root of 106, 10.295, 10.3. Um, and this is where I always try to think about what Becca's teaching next, right, and say it's technically, mathematically, plus or minus 10.3, but as hard as Sam tried, he could not walk negative distance, so yeah. it has to be positive. Keep, right. keep teaching them that. Yeah. Because I do, I, it in there. I struggle, they're just like, wait, what, a negative number? Yeah. They don't like it. So, Sam is 10.3 miles, and we would say direction. So how would we do this? So this is no longer question, 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 question. We know we the answer now. Yeah. We now know it's 10.3 meters. So how do we? We could, we could go simple and say it's northeast. Mm -hmm. Or because we know trigonometry, we can figure out exactly, exactly the, the degree. Oh, man. Right? So and, and in, usually in a basic physics class, like at a very early level when we're just learning, hey, what are vectors? Right. We would just do northeast. Right. But, you know, that's a really good point, right? If, if, yeah. if the actual, if we were really doing this, we thing we actually wanted to know, you yeah. know, we would want to know the exact, like, you know, angular right. displacement from the origin. Like, step outside, face north, turn 32.6 degrees, and walk 10.296 miles. Right. And you will be at the Red Wigglers.
<laughs> right at the Red Wing list. Oh, I didn't label that. Or draw a picture. Or draw a picture. Oh, I don't really know how to. Just, just here's some wigglers. Meow. Yeah, just something red Meow. that looks wiggly. Okay, yeah, check it stuff. out. There it is. That's it. Come on, producers, check it out. There we go. Oh, uh, look at all oh. the red wigglers. Look at all the red wigglers. And then he puts them in his beard. Smiley walks face. Walks right back. Look at my beard. Walk, walk them Meow. home. <laughs> so there they are. Their natural habitat. Yeah. Look how happy he is. Looks like he got punched so in the happy. mouth. Or mm -hmm. had red wigglers. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Oh, no, I almost threw the pen. Mm. Okay. Wow. <laughs>